A couple of weeks ago from one of my videos, I received a comment from one of you guys asking me how do I deal with messy source data. I work with a lot of messy data sources and I've approached them quite differently depending on the situation. In this video, we're going to go through some of the different approaches that I take when it comes to dealing with messy data sources. I'll rank them based on ease of implementation and I'll also bring in some of my personal tips to help you know which approach is the right one for you. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. Before we get to the different approaches, let's first define what a messy data source means. A messy data source means a data source that requires further cleansing before you can use it for data analysis. It could be that your source data is not flat or there are empty values where there shouldn't be. Either way, this messy data needs to be transformed into a usable format so that you can use them for your reporting. And the approach that I take on cleaning this data totally depends on the situation. So let's go through the different approaches that I take and when you should use them. The first approach you can take is to clean your data in Power BI. Power Query within Power BI and Excel are built exactly for that, for cleansing and transformation. Data preparation is done visually so you can see a preview of how your data evolves as you make changes to it. You can do actions like replace values, remove errors, delete columns, add calculated columns, and much, much more. I cover Power Query a lot in my previous videos, but if you're interested in a more in-depth guide, let me know so I can cover it in my future videos. Cleaning your data through Power Query is the easiest approach because you don't have dependencies from other people. So as long as you receive data, you're able to clean and transform this into a usable format for reporting. This approach is ideal for quick one-off implementations like for example building a one-off report that someone requested or maybe if you need to deliver reports in a short amount of time. This approach allows you to clean up the data that you receive and get insights quickly. I use this approach quite a lot for ad hoc report requests that I get where those quick insights are really critical. The source data that I get are typically in Excel and sent to me via email and I send it back via email as well or Power BI depending on the request. However, this doesn't come without its own limitations limitations. Because you don't have a visibility of where the source data is coming from or how it's being derived, it means that the data can and might change over time. This means that you might have to fix your Power Query or recreate it altogether, adding more work and effort. And imagine you have to do that on a regular basis. That's a lot of time that you could be using elsewhere. Another issue you might come up with is when you have data that can't be cleaned up either because it's missing or it's just incorrect. You can clean and fix a lot of data in Power Query, but these types of issues, you can only resolve them from the source itself. In order to deal with missing or incorrect values, we move on to my second approach, which is to clean the source data. Cleaning the source data means doing a bit of investigative work on where the data is coming from and how it's being derived. This is a medium in terms of difficulty because it goes beyond the scope of Power BI. You will need to engage with the data owner and understand how that data is being created. Maybe it's getting generated from another reporting system, maybe it's getting sent to them from another person, or maybe they're doing calculations of their own before they send it to you. There could be several reasons as to why the process is as it is, and the more you know about the source data itself, the more chances you have of actually resolving the issues. When engaging with your data source owners, your goal should be to looking for opportunities to decrease manual efforts. This goal will ultimately save them time and help you minimize errors and delays. So it's a win-win for you and them, really. For example, if they perform any calculations to the data before they send it to you in Excel, instead ask for the source data itself uh, and do the calculations in Power Query. This decreases the amount of work that they have to do and at the same time gives you a lot of control with the calculations in case something goes wrong. This approach is not as quick to implement as the previous one because it actually requires you to engage with the dataset owner. Not only that but also to understand the process and implement it which can take time but ultimately it will save you time in the long run. This approach is ideal if you have to deliver the same reports in the same formats on a regular basis 
with just the numbers slightly changed. So for example, if you have to deliver monthly reports in the same format, but in just in different month periods, decreasing the manual effort involved means that every month you can deliver this report in minutes and not hours. But again, like the other approaches, this also has its own limitations. For example, working with big data can become a challenge when it comes to Power BI in general. Power Query is a visual transformation tool, so it can be quite sluggish, especially when you're dealing with big data. This sluggishness can really slow down your development process. Another limitation is the data refresh. Because someone still has to send you the data manually, your reports are only as up to date as when the latest data was sent to you. So if you imagine if your clients wanted a daily report or even hourly, doing this manual process, you know, can add up over time. To resolve these limitations, we move to my third approach, which is to build integrations to your source data directly. An integration is essentially when you're able to connect to the data source directly. You're able to fetch data automatically without having someone send it to you. This automation allows you to deliver reports with live data. For example, if you need to deliver data from Zendesk, which is a ticketing tool, instead of getting the data from the reporting tool from Zendesk, you can connect to the Zendesk API directly through Power BI. It supports it natively. However, if your source data is not supported natively by Power BI, you can also use uh, ETL tools like Azure Data Factory or SSIS to insert that data into a database where your Power BI reports can pull the data from. Using a database or a data warehouse as an intermediary storage is a good idea, especially if you're dealing with big data. This approach eliminates minutes almost all of the manual processes involved, right? So you have your ETL tools that are scheduled to extract that data automatically. You have your transformations stored in Power Query and your reports are refreshed on a schedule in Power BI. This means that you're able to deliver insights on a more regular basis without any manual effort at all. This approach is one of my favorites, right? A fully automated reporting solution allows you to report on a live data and deliver insights on a regular basis without having to do anything. This frees up my time to do other things. However, this is the most difficult approach out of the bunch because it requires a whole lot of effort and time upfront. Delivering a solution like this requires a lot of technical knowledge when it comes to ETL tools and data warehousing, which can have some time but also cost implications. You might also need some special permissions when it comes to connecting to your source data directly and if it's confidential data, this can be difficult to obtain. And lastly, if you're delivering for a large company, getting approvals and coordinating between different people can take weeks or even months for simple implementations like this. So while this approach is my favorite, you need to weigh out your options, right? Is the insight that you will get out of this worth this implementation? And that's it. Those were my three different approaches when it comes to dealing with messy data. It's a lot of theory, but I hope you guys got something out of that. If you have any questions that you'd like me to cover in a video in the future, let me know in the comment section down below. Give this video a like if it helped you. It's the best way to let me know that you enjoy this type of content. Get in touch using the social media links that are included in the description box below. And thank you so much guys for watching. See you again on the next one.